Identity theft, we have talked about it before and it frightens the bejeebies out of me. We all know it can happen anytime to anyone, so sure, we've heard those horror stories about it, but I think it's critical that we know how to protect ourselves and our families from becoming the next target. Michael Furtick, the CEO of Reputation Defender, is just the man for the job. He's our guy on this subject and he's here on the show today uh, to tell us what we can do to stop these thieves in their tracks. So. Call your sister, your girlfriend, or your mom, or your man, because this information is something that everyone needs to hear. Okay, Michael, I'm glad to have you back. Cut to the chase. How many identities are stolen each year? Nine million Americans have their identity stolen wow. every year. That is a huge number. <laughs> huge. It is extremely costly to people and to the economy. For every person whose identity is stolen, it takes an average of 30 to 60 hours of time to repair what they have to repair in order to get themselves back together. It costs the American economy about 50 billion dollars a oh, year. I mean, wow. it's staggering. The, the, the FTC, the Federal Trade Commission, their number one complaint multi, many years in a row from consumers in America is that their identity has been stolen. Now, please don't scare me because I'm someone who does, I would say, 75% of my shopping online. It's right. easier. I can do it at 2 o'clock in the morning or 2 o'clock in the afternoon. I don't have to worry about right. stores closing down right. on me. So is it safe for me to do that? And I hope you can see my fingers are crossed. <laughs> yeah, normally it is safe. It's a great question. Normally it is safe. You don't have to be afraid of the Internet. There are some good precautions that you can take. So when you go to a website, make sure that the website is secure before you look up, uh, before you input your credit card information. And you know what, there's a, the web domain, there's a web address, HTTP, that's the typical address, but if it's secure, it's normally gonna say HTTPS. So that's the first thing you can do to make Ooh. sure that your credit card information is safe. Well, let, you put together a group of tips, and I wanna get through these today, there are four of them. The first tip is that you must shred credit card applications and ATM right. rece receipts. How can someone steal your information from, from them? Well, it's a lot of things you can do are very, very simple to protect yourself. Everybody gets these prepaid credit card applications in the mail. You get them in the mail, they say, you know, discover Amex, Visa, and so forth. Here's, a, here's another special offer for you. Don't just throw them away if you're going to throw them away. Make sure you rip them up nice and good. And even an extra tip, if you want to be a little extra careful, throw half of it away today and half away in tomorrow's garbage. What is it? So the What's the information receipt? on there that you can use? Uh, well, what they can do is they can actually fill it out for you. <laughs> and, oh. and that, that's exactly right. Um, millions of Americans every year, of the nine million whose identities roughly are stolen every year, millions of them are, uh, are, are victims of what's called new account fraud. So they actually set up a credit card or set up a bank account in your name and they use the credit against it. And the ATM slip? The ATM slips, well, it depends on what ATM you're actually using, what your bank does, but the ATM slip has a lot more information than you might think. Sometimes it has your account number on it, or at least the last digits, which can be useful, or some login information. But often enough, the information that's there is the balance and the transaction information. And if you remember, when you call up your bank to validate your identity, often enough, the question they ask you is, what was the size, place, and time of your last transaction? And that's how they know who you are. So just be careful. Just put it in your pocketbook, put it in your pocket, and throw it away at the office instead of throwing it away, at, away right there at the ATM spot. Then the next couple of tips, I just want to go through them just so we can go back. Do not post personal information on social networking websites. I have told young people this because they're the My, MySpace and the Facebook people constantly. The third one is never open an email claiming the be from a bank your bank does not send you emails that way and the last tip do not leave your social security card in your wallet so uh, I gotta tell you Michael that one right there is the one right well there are a bunch there are a bunch I mean the uh, you know, there's some others for example if you're if you're going away for a vacation and your, your mail is accumulating in your mailbox get someone to take it out of your mailbox for you um, the social security information very critical to finding out uh, and stealing your identity. This is very, very easy. There's an entire business, actually, that's built around providing people who want information about you with that information. It's marketing information. It's the source of all the junk mail. There are a lot of companies that, do, that are in the business of 
aggregating information about well, you? Well, I'm going to have to bring you back to give us the rest of these tips because I, okay. everybody's writing them down. I need to thank you. <laughs> okay. uh, we are going to finish up today because I've got some special, very special.